back in music tonight. I feel my spirit should come to hear how I preach tonight. Amen. Sister May, will you do a little something for me for that? I feel it tonight. Amen. I'm going to sing a song. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. Whatever the Lord lays on my heart, what I like to do. And you know, it don't matter who preaches tonight. We got several preachers here. God bless us with a lot of preachers, a lot of musicians, a lot of singers. Amen. And the Bible said we'd be gotten by the word. And he said his word would not. Huh? Somebody will hear it on it. It won't come back going. But if one person hears it, amen. It'll be worth it all. Amen. I'm going to sing a song tonight, amen? I'm having a hard time keeping going to Nashville, but I'm trying to hang around Ray for a while, amen? I'm going to try to sing this song now uh, on the way home, and I'm on my way home, amen? Jesus is a coming, can't you see it everywhere? There's so much around me. Ain't you feeling in the air? Neighbor, tell your neighbor. Say, I'm happy song. Time to get started. On the way home. On the way home.
that he wants it for, but I know there's somebody Amen. in the building tonight. Yes. God's word will not come back void. Hallelujah. But I began to study the word of God and I began to listen to the voice of God. And you know, there's a sin in the world today. And I'd like to tell you that a wound of sin yes. is great. Amen. There's no way in the world that anybody can do away with it by yourself. You've got to let Jesus yeah. take it. Amen. And sin started in the beginning. Yeah. The third chapter of Genesis. God made the first man. Yeah. And I want you to know tonight that man was powerful. Oh, yeah. That man was human. And that man was here to start a life on earth yeah. for every animal, every human, but he got the wound of sin. Yeah. And we know the story and ain't going to go into it. <laughs> Let me tell you, the wound got bigger with, with his first born son. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to tell you today that God can only heal the wound. And amen. When we know the story how that Adam partaken of the fruit that God told him not to take. Amen. And that wound began to know. Let me know when you get big enough wound, there will be magnets, there will be worms, there will be infection, there will be all kinds of diseases that will work into that wound. And I'm going to tell you, see, it will take you further, friend, than you'll ever want to go. Hallelujah. You want to come back. And sometimes it's not as easy to come back as it was to go. Hallelujah. I'm sure, folks, if Adam could have had a change and a fix what he done, after he done it, he would have. Hallelujah. But it was too late. And I'm here to tell you tonight, there are people that are going down on the wrong road and they're going to be able to come back. Let me go over to it. Oh, listen. Adam knew what God said. And his wound began to get bigger. His first son, Cain. We know what happened when Cain was, had his brother Abel in the fourth chapter of, of Genesis. And God asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? Again, like he asked Adam, who told you you was naked? Let me tell you, sin will make you feel naked. It'll make you feel naked when you got clothes on. It'll make you feel like I thank God just exactly what you do. Honey, that's when God wants your attention. That's when it's time to come back to God. When you begin to feel. Hallelujah. And Abel looked, Cain looked at him and said, I don't know. And God said, oh, oh, I heard his blood crying to me from the ground. Oh, Lord, let me tell you, Cain was right in his daddy's way. He said, Daddy, if he could have hollered for Daddy to bail him out, folks, he would have. But let me tell you, sin will take you further. You want to go. And we all know the story. I want you to follow with me tonight. God's got a message for you. And then God told Cain, He said, You are cursed from the earth. He told Adam, He said, You I, I put out. God even put turbans at the gate, at the corner, around the Eve Garden of Eden. Honey, when God put you out, there's no cup. There's no coming back. My, my, my. Hallelujah. And the ground that opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood for thy, thy head. Let me tell you, Abel was spared from the wound of his brother's sin. How in the world, Sister Sharp, could Abel be spared? from his brother and his daddy's sin, the wounds of his sin, because
because when he lost his life, honey, he went right into the bosom of Abraham. God had his hand upon him. Let me tell you, God knows who he is. And on the earth, God told him, instead, it's going to make you pay. You will work by the sweat of your brow. He told Adam, he said, you will work by the sweat of your brow. He told his son, Cain, you will work. I want you to listen. Honey, if you've ever been a tiller of the ground, if you've ever been a farmer, if you've ever been one that worked in the fields, that's hard labor. And let me tell you, it's to do with the earth. And if the earth don't want you to proceed to get anything out of it, he'll stop you. Hallelujah. It says to cast that your seed in good ground. Abel happened to be in good ground. His seed cried out. God, have mercy. And the earth is going to make you pay, Cain. You will work, but will not bless you from your labor. You will be on the run, a fugitive. A sinner tonight, folks, is a fugitive from God. They're running. The wound is sinning. The wound is getting bigger and bigger with each sin that we commit. Cain said, Lord,
that he made this old world. Brother Danny, it's getting bad. Hallelujah. And he repented that he ever made man. Oh, Lord. It grieved him at his heart. It, at his heart. What grieved him? It was going to have to destroy. God has no pleasure in them that go down without him. God has no pleasure in those that turn down what he built up. God only gets pleasure out of his strength, out of his people, out of his workers, out of them that are living holy and dedicated and walking in the name of Jesus. Doing what God has called him to do. Amen. He was grieved. Yes. He repented. He was grieved. It grieved him. Yes. And his heart. I'm talking about God. Yes. It, re it grieved him to see what condition the world had gotten in. Can you imagine tonight, Brother Jane, how God looks upon America? It used to be easy for us to say in a foreign land. Now we can say America. Because they have forgotten God. Everything else in the world was important to people. But God Almighty. Everything in the world is luxury to them. But God. Let me tell you folks. The only thing that you better hold on to is God. He no more hold on behind because he's holding on to you. He's holding on to you. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. God used Noah to bring comfort concerning the work and the toil of our hands. How did he do it? Through obedience. Through obeying God. Taking that step out in that wicked world. One man, no word did it say that he had anybody help him. No word does it say that he had even his father. Nobody, no word in the Bible that I found up and it's in there. You let me know that I've not found word, neither one of his sons. Brother Austin, come and say, Daddy, you want me to stand with you? I just wish some of you would focus. Your problems won't see nothing compared to what God's problem sees. He hears one mother say, Lord, spare this world long enough to get my boy saved. God, would you not come after us? I still got children lost. And then he's got this little brother this little grandmother, grandfather in the corner down on their knees and said, God, please, please wait just a little bit longer until I can get my family in. And then he's got us like me and said, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord, and get us out of here. Folks, let me tell you, God is still God. says it's ready. And I, I can stand here tonight and tell you from the sincerity of my heart, there's not a person on the face of this earth that God ain't give a chance to repent. Amen. 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 I'm preaching to you is heaven or hell. God didn't spare the people back in Noah's day. Folks, why did God want Noah to build such a big ark? Let me tell you, he gave every human being on that face of that earth that day a chance to get in that ark. I think it took on Noah a while, about 120 years. 120 years. And only eight souls. And we get discouraged when our crowd gets down. Lord, somebody ain't liking this, but it's okay. 
you're going to take it home with you. Yeah.
sending his word through this congregation. Some of you done shut it out. That wants you to grow. Want you to lay it. Just see what you will lay down for him. Honey, I don't care tonight. Whatever is in your life, if it's got you bound to that and it troubles you, even if it's a neighbor, if it's somebody calls you on the phone, if it keeps you down that you can't read, you can't pray, and it makes you angry when you talk, get rid of it. Yeah. I'm trying to help. No, you want to make it worse. There's some people, they want to help. They'll come to church. Samson, he had an appetite of the carnal mind. Now remember, the angel told us something. Just like God told that. Lord, I hope you get this. <laughs> Samson was childish in his plans, but yet he was courageous in the battle. He was mighty in physical strength, yet weak in resisting temptation. Look over somebody said, is that you? Is it you? Can you override temptation? Or do you just have to take a good look? Samson got into trouble. When Samson failed and his eyes was plucked out Again, I'm not going into these stories. Surely to God, you people know the story behind every one of these men. If you ain't, they suddenly go back to Melissa and Frida's class. I'm sure you'll learn. He had his eyes plucked out. Garden of Eden, why? Because his wife. He done what his wife wanted. Lord, I feel like Somebody here tonight is going to get help. Samson was born separated from the world of sin.
his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And let me tell you what the angel said. That man also was called a Nazarite. Samson couldn't do it. God can. If Moses couldn't do it, God can. If Adam didn't do it, God can. If Brother Danny can't do it, Brother Austin, myself, Brother Sam, Brother Robert, we can't do it, God can. Yeah. That Savior, that man, Samson knew where to go 
is today is the day of salvation. God said, call on me. Where's he going? Somebody said, well, I'll just wait till I get old. Where's he going? He said, well, he could be found. Sounds to me like he's going to be somewhere. Lord, some of you don't get it. I said, it sounds to me like he's going to be somewhere. Brother Danny, that we can't find him if we don't know him.
city. Let me tell you, God is about ready. And he told me to tell you, I will send fire the next time for we run. There ain't going to be no ark to get in. Tonight, today, is the day of salvation. Brother Austin Coleman said, everybody wants to pray tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost power. I feel God speaking to somebody tonight. Somebody needs to repent of their sins and call upon Him. God sees Nobody looking around. Everybody's Somebody here is lost without God. Somebody here needs to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Jesus. I feel like there's somebody here lost without the Lord. And I feel like there's somebody here that's gone lukewarm. You've never left the pew. You've never left the church house. Maybe you're even faithful to this place of rain. But where do you stand at with God? Somebody needs to take yourself in the tour. Jesus is here. Come on, if this is you, don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed to come to this altar and say, Well, Brother Austin, I don't want so and so to see me. I don't want so and so to know that my walk with God isn't what it should be. If you knew the importance of your soul, you wouldn't be so concerned about other people's opinions about you. Why should I worry about other people's opinions when one day I will face a judgment? Come on, somebody. I've got to be right with God. I've got to have my sins washed by the blood. Would you come? She's here. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And we esteemed him stricken, rejected among men. The same one.
Somebody needs to get the realization that Jesus suffered the very wound of sin that you find yourself suffering from tonight. And because he suffered that wound, the Spirit anointed that man, Christ Jesus, Accident, but you're here by divine appointment. I went to God, this altar was full. Somebody seeking after the Lord. I went to God, somebody would obey the Holy Ghost. Say, God, have mercy on me. Amongst the congregation tonight. I don't know what's caused some of us to have this spirit of confrontation. I pray But some people in the building tonight need to say, God help me. Let me be swift to hear and slow to speak. Let me be like the wise man and hear the conclusion of the whole matter before I open my mouth in judgment or in accusation. Come on, somebody. You come. I won't let nothing hold me back. Would you come? Set to God for the next few moments. Would you begin to pray with everything in you? Somebody's going to let this opportunity pass the by. Saints pray. Saints pray.